If you ever think of buying good quality meat at unbeatable price, think Magilac Butchers, your only suitable solution for quality meat for you and your family consumption. Our comprehensive range of meat products include minced meat, beef slices, top side, knuckle, rump steak, silver side, tenderloin, strip loin, and four quarter. We offer consistent value, quality, and service through animals grass-fed and bred, especially for their meat. This makes the meat much more tasty, succulent, tender, and easy to cook. All meats at Magilic Butchers are halal, including for the first time in the Gambia, the new Mongolian whole lamb, available only at Magilic Butchers. Rush now and visit Magilic Butchers on Caraba Avenue, opposite the Petrogas petrol station traffic lights. For inquiries and orders, please call 7688-688. That is 7688-688. Magilic Butchers, the home of quality meat and chicken products at unbeatable prices. I forgot to tell him. Are you guys talking about money transfer to buy provisions? Yes. yes. But don't you know about Baluo? 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 What is Baluo? Baluo is a service that your son can use to send provisions directly to you guys from the shop. And you don't have to worry about the exchange rate. Tell me how Baluo works. It's very simple. Just log on to baluo.com and shop or download the app on your phone. You can shop on the website or using the app to buy online basic products for your family and friends. With Baluo, you decide what your money is spent on. Your money, your choice. Buy online products for your family and friends in the Gambia, Senegal, Nigeria or Mali. Baluo, better than sending money. Hi, you're watching Kerfato. My name is Buba Gajigo. And this is your educational program. We're going to bring you primary school lessons. If you have kids at primary school level, please get them prepared. Give them a pencil and a book. I hope you will enjoy these lessons. Are you thinking of owning your dream homes? EJ Investment is here for you. Secure our quality bungalows with two, three or four bedrooms or our story building three or four to five bedrooms at very affordable prices with flexible payment plans at our Sanyang Seaview Estate where you can enjoy the cool breeze with modern infrastructure such as the roads, covered drainage system, modern electrification with street lights, gated entrance with security posts and social amenities such as gas station, shopping mall, medical clinic, park, schools, children daycare, and a lot more. Our dedicated team of professionals will keep the estate clean at all times, provide security and patrol team within the estate premises, install latest technologies such as CCTV, Wi-Fi, home network installation, solar panel, and power backup system. Also, check out for our additional home facilities and interior design service, such as premium tiling, wall plaster, home landscape, fingerprint home lock, and a lot more. Visit our office at Senegambia Kololi Highway and get a free site visit tour or contact us on 4464-838. WhatsApp us on 3259-220. Or you can visit our Facebook page or Instagram on EJ Investments. EJ Investments, we are first in properties. Thank you. 
children and staff of Mary's Little Lamb School are contributing this song to help in the fight and sensitization of coronavirus in the Gambia. Dear children, please listen to doctors' advices and the Ministry of Health to help stop the spread of this virus. Avoid handshakes. Avoid social gatherings. Wash your hands always with soap and clean water. Stay at home. And if anyone around you is suspected of having the virus, the number to call is 1025. Once upon a time, long, long ago, King Grammar traveled his kingdom, making sure all of his people had everything they needed to be good citizens of Grammar. Leaping, dancing, milking, juggling! <laughs> oh, bravo, sir! Your song is charming, but why not use a few nouns to make it more interesting? Nouns? Absolutely kind, sir. A noun is a person, place, thing, or animal. Say it with me. A person, person place, place, thing, or animal. animal. Instead of only singing about leaping, add a few nouns and you can have knights leaping down a street. Instead of milking, why not sing of a farmer milking his cow? Or instead of simply juggling, sing of a boy juggling apples. And why sing only of dancing when you can sing of children dancing in a fountain? Now you say it. Nouns can be... A person. person. A thing. A, a place. place. An animal. Oh, I mean... An animal. Farewell, people of Grammar Kingdom. Fair
Farewell, King Grandma. Thank you for bringing us nouns. Once upon a time, there was the village of Do Nothing, where, as the name suggests, people did, well, nothing. Even the sun did nothing. It didn't rise in the morning, and it didn't set in the evening. It was just there, every day, in the very same place. Children did not play. Choirs did not sing. Birds did not fly. Rabbits did not hop. Artists did not draw. Builders did not build. People did not eat. No one did anything at all. Good day, fine people of Do Nothing. It is I, King Grammar. Good King Grammar was surprised that no one did anything to show they cared one tiny bit about his royal arrival. They did not clap, nor did they cheer. It was quite clear to the king, as he looked around, that the people of Do Nothing were missing something very, very important. You, my new friends, are missing some verbs. What are verbs, you ask? Verbs are words we use to talk about what something is or what something does. The verbs we use to talk about what something does are called action verbs. Without action verbs, no one would ever have anything to do. You, my good woman, could be a woman that dances. I dance. And you are not just children. Ha ha ha! You are children that play! We play! And you are not just a man. Oh no, you are a man that builds! I build! And that bird is not just a bird. It is a bird that flies. Look at that bird fly, and that rabbit hop, and that man walk. Ha ha ha! I think you're getting the hang of it. Action verbs make our world so much better because they give us things to do. That means the sun can set. And the choir can sing. Ah. The stars can shine. And the village of Do Nothing is now the village of Do Everything. From that day on, after King Grandma brought action verbs to the village of Do Nothing, it would never be the same village again. Farewell, good king. Thank you for giving us so much to do. And everyone lived actively ever after. The frog hops. The frogs hop. The horse runs. The horses run. The clown juggles. The clowns juggle. The ball drops. The balls drop.
Once upon a time, in the village of long, long ago, the villagers were really quite active. They painted, they worked, they danced and they played. But now, at this present moment, the villagers of long, long ago don't do much of anything. But that is all about to change. Good people of long, long ago, why are you all just standing about doing nothing? We did lots of things in the past, King Grammar. But now, I'm afraid we don't do anything at all. Not ever? Never ever. It's true. In the past, we worked. We painted. We danced. We skipped. We played. Let's hear it for the past! Hooray for the past! Hmm. Played, skipped, danced, painted, worked. Aha! It appears that all your verbs are stuck in the past. But don't fret. I come bearing good news. Verbs come in other tenses. What are tenses? The past, present, and future. You see, the past tense is anything that happened before this very moment, like yesterday, or the day before that, or last week, or last year, or, uh, long, long ago. The present is happening right now, at this very moment in time. And the future is anything that is yet to come, tomorrow, or the next day, or next year, or 100 years from now. These verb tenses you speak of, how do we use them? It's quite simple, really. If you want to talk about the past, you use verbs like worked, played, and danced. Those are called past tense verbs. You can walk, talk, play, dance, paint, or whatever else you want to do right here and now using present tense verbs. For example, I am talking right now and you are listening right now. Traveler is resting after a long journey, and your dog is chewing on his bone. You can also plan on what you are going to do at any time in the future using future tense verbs. You will work, you will paint, you will play. Oh, but don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. Well, long, long ago, I worked on my house. Now I am working on my house. And next week, I will work on my house some more. Last year, I danced in this very spot. Now I am dancing. And tomorrow, I will dance again. I played with the dog. I am playing with the dog. I will play with the dog. I skipped. I am skipping. I will skip. You did, you are, and you will. Ah, oh, these verb tenses are a wonderful thing. Past. Present. Future. Long, long ago, I painted this sign. Now I am painting it again. And so the village of long, long ago became known as Verb Village, where the past, present, and future tenses were all welcome. The day started like any other, but that was all about to change when King Grammar's faithful steward came bearing good news. King Grammar! I come bearing good news. What is it, my faithful steward? Chatty, our loyal messenger bird of countless years, has come down with the bird flu. This is good news? Mm, no, uh, <laughs> not, not for Chatty. Hmm. The good news is we searched Grammar Kingdom far and wide to bring you an extraordinary choice of messenger birds to take over his duties. Any one of these birds would be a fine pick, Your Majesty. <laughs> Splendid! Hello, my fine feathered friends. Do tell me a bit about yourselves. Rat! Hello, King Grammar. I will make the best messenger. And why is that? Rat! 
I go to many places in your kingdom already. Uh, goad, next. Ah, hello, I seed many wonderful places in the kingdom. Seed, next. Rah, I told your steward I would make the best messenger. Telled, next. What? I doed the same thing. <sighs> next. I run really fast before I finally learn how to fly. Next! I sit it on the peak of the highest mountain in your kingdom. Oh my, who trained these birds how to speak? It is I, your majesty. I teach these birds everything I know. I see. Well, you do realize these birds have not been trained in the proper use of past action verbs? Oh. Oh, forgive me, King Grammar. I doed everything in my power to teach them well. Oh, dear, oh, dear. <clears throat> Perhaps we should have a quick review of action verbs. Remember that we use action verbs to say what something or someone does. The minstrel plays the mandolin. The steward sits and listens. There are also many times we want to talk about what someone did in the past. That could be just a few minutes ago, yesterday, or many years ago. It's all in the past. Yes, yes, I, I see. The minstrel plays the mandolin. Is happening now. When we talk about the past, we change the verb a little bit. The minstrel played the mandolin happened in the past. With the action verb play and many other action verbs, we change the verb so that it refers to the past by adding the letters ED or D. The court jester juggles is happening now. The court jester juggled happened in the past. We add D to juggle to make the verb refer to it happening in the past. Ah, got it. D or ED. Yes, uh, but with some verbs, we do not add D or ED to talk about the past. <gasps> we don't? No. Instead, the verb changes in some other way. The steward sits on the stool is happening now. The steward sat on the stool happened in the past. See how sit became sat, not sitted. Ah, I see now. Sit and sat. And the past of the action verb go? Went. Say. Uh, said. Do. Uh, did. Run. Ran. Ah, yes. Now we understand, Your Majesty. So, which of these birds do you choose to be your new messenger? Oh, Your oh, Majesty! Hey, 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 hey. I declare that all of you shall be official messengers of Grammar Kingdom. Now go and spread the good news. And with that, all the parrots in the castle flied happily. <coughs> flew! Oh, yes, of course. Uh, flew happily ever after. Once upon a time, there was a town where nothing had its own name. The shops were just shops with no names. The school was just a school. Even the people didn't have names. Wife, where is Dog? Dog is outside. Okay, see you later, wife. Goodbye, husband. Not even the pets had names. Hey, Dog, come here, Dog. Not you, dog. And not you, dog. There you are, dog. Let's go. Oh, hi, kid next door. Hi, kid who lives down the street. Hi, neighbor man who lives in the blue house. This town wasn't on a map because it didn't have a name. But all that changed the day King Grandma rode in to the town with no name. Welcome to town. But what's the name of this town? What's a name? A name is what you call a particular person, place, thing, or animal so you can talk about it. 
It's like this. My name is King Grammar. What's your name? What do people call you? Man, of course. And this is Dog. <laughs> Please call me King Grammar. That's my name. Uh, what exactly is a name again? Listen, my horse's name is Traveler. Your life would be so much easier with names. These are strange words you're saying. But I welcome you to our town anyway. And what do you call this town? Town, of course. So King Grammar accompanied the man into town. He wanted all the people to know about names. In that shop, we buy our meat. In that shop, we buy our bread. And here is where we buy our clothes. Listen, good people of town, you really need to get a name for this place. Let me explain. Words like man, dog, and house that we use to talk about people and animals and places and other things, those are called nouns. In fact, the words for all the things that we can see around us right now are nouns. Shop, horse, street, your town, even my bugle. We use a noun like man for every man, so we call it a common noun. But if you want to talk about one particular person, then you need to have a name for that person that is different from what you call other men. Take me, for example. I'm a man, but my name is King Grammar, not man. When you say my name, I know you're talking about me, see? Not some other man. A noun like that, which is the name of something, is called a proper noun. With proper nouns, you can tell which person you are talking about in this town of... Uh, this town of... Oh, dear. Ah! Ah! <laughs> the town of proper. We're going to call this town proper. That's good. But the first letter of a proper noun is always a capital letter. So let's fix that. You know, I like that. Hello there, William. Yes, your name will be William. And your dog, Bella, is quite pretty. Tommy's Tailor Shop. The Muffin Man Bakery. Great Chops Butcher Shop. Can a school have a name? Of course, every school has a name. I say we call it King Grammar Elementary School. <laughs> What a beautiful name. And this is a beautiful town. I think I'll stay a while. Once upon a time, there was a small village. In this village, there was only one of everything. People had only one shoe or one boot. Wagons had only one wheel, and there was only one spoon in a household. The name of the village was Singleton. It never occurred to anyone in Singleton that more than one of something could be useful. Then, one day, King Grammar came to visit on his magnificent horse, Traveler. Good people of Singleton, presenting King Grammar! I am King Grammar. I am traveling about the kingdom, visiting all the towns, and I... Why is everyone wearing only one boot? You, sir, is that a custom in this town? 
Mm -hmm. And you, my lady. Why only one shoe? Mm -hmm. And over there, a one-wheeled cart. And the tracks down there in the dust, only one horseshoe per horse? Why are you asking these strange questions? This is Singleton. We always have just one of everything. Yes, but life is so much better when you have more than one of something. That's why you need plurals. Plural is more than one of something. One glove is useful, but if you add an S, you get gloves. Gloves is the plural of glove. Now you've got two gloves. Boot becomes boots, shoe becomes shoes, and sleeve becomes sleeves. Since fly ends with Y, to make it plural, we drop the Y and add I-E-S. Fly becomes flies. Um, I don't think anyone wants more than one fly. Oh, <laughs> right. I notice it's starting to get dark. Do we have a match to light the town torch? Now, in this case, we add E-S. We can use these matches to light the town torches. But we have just one torch, there in the town square. Torch. To make torch plural, we add E-S. Torches. Three cheers for King Grammar! Hooray! Hooray! Oh, <laughs> that was only two. They just learned about plurals. We'll work on it next time. ABCMouse.com ABCMouse.com I'm tired. Hey. How about you tell me a story instead of book time tonight, Billy? Okay, Daddy. What kind of story? Hmm. I don't know. Why don't you just close your eyes and tell me a story? Make it up. Okay. Once upon a time, there was a wiggly worm and a, a chicken. What kind of chicken is it? Can you think of any words to describe it? It was a funny chicken. Bawk, 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 bawk. <laughs> he, he was clumsy. <laughs> yeah, he was so silly. So where does this chicken live? He lived in a muddy barnyard. And the wiggly worm lived there too. And you know what else? The wiggly worm was pink. It started to rain, and the raindrops were huge. And the chicken and the worm got soaking wet. The clumsy, funny chicken <laughs> laughed at the wiggly pink worm because um, the chicken could run to the cozy warm barn quickly. But the worm wriggled to the barn slowly. My goodness! What happened next? The fast chicken felt sorry for the slow worm. He picked up the worm. Then he carefully carried the worm to the cozy warm barn, laid him down gently in the soft hay, and gave him a big kiss goodnight. That was the best story I've heard all day. Can you tell me another one? Okay. Once there was a very tired boy. His big, strong daddy picked him up. Then his daddy carefully carried the boy to his cozy, warm bed, laid him down gently, and gave him a big kiss goodnight. Oh, you mean like this? <laughs> <laughs> Hi there, everyone. Welcome to my fantastical, majestic word factory. I call this the Descripto Spinner. Let me show you how it works. Cat. C. 
sits. The cat sits. Pink. The pink cat sits. Jumps. The pink cat jumps. Slowly. The pink cat jumps slowly. Quickly. The pink cat jumps quickly. Zebra. The pink zebra jumps quickly. Fluffy. The fluffy pink zebra jumps quickly. Sleeps. The fluffy pink zebra sleeps. sleeps quietly. Once upon a time, there was a village that was very, very ordinary. And it seemed like nothing exciting ever happened. And so that is why it was called Ordinary Town. In Ordinary Town, even the village fair was kind of blah. It was summer, and it only came once a year. Still, nobody seemed to be having a fun-filled and exciting time. Thank you for that performance, village people. How is everybody feeling today? All right. Okay. Fine. But all that changed the day King Grammar rode into Ordinary Town. Next on the program will be... <sighs> An archery contest. Good people of Ordinary Town, I am King Grammar. I am traveling about the kingdom, visiting all the towns. All right. Okay. Fine. I've just come to town, and I think there's something terribly wrong here. Everything is, well, just ordinary. Uh, right. That's the name of the town. But you could be so much more than ordinary. All you need is a few describing words. Describing words? A describing word is a word that tells you something more about a person, a thing, or an action. What is this? A hat. But what kind of hat, hmm? Let's say more about it. This is a big hat. It's a big purple hat. It's a big purple hat with a yellow feather. Now look at it. Describing words are what keep your lives and language from being ordinary. Huzzah! Ah, finally! Long, Long live, live King, King Grammar! You there, Archer, please demonstrate your skill with the bow. And a red arrow, shot by an archer in a green suit. He moves quickly. He is strong. He is confident. He is an excellent archer. And now he is a happy archer. Let's give him a cheer. Yay. 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 Oh, make that a loud, hearty cheer from an excited crowd in beautifully colored clothes. Yay. Yay. Music. Oh, lively, pleasant music. Dancers. Energetic, graceful dancers. Good people of Ordinary Town. You are anything but ordinary now. 
Henceforth, your town shall be known as Extraordinary Town. The annual Grammar Kingdom Theatre Festival made its triumphant return with the premiere of the play, The Celebration. And the townfolk celebrated their victory. How did you like the play, King Grammar? I directed it myself. Well, I would say the whole production seemed a bit... Uh, humdrum. Humdrum? Yes, you know, dull, boring, Yonsville. <sighs> oh dear, I'll never work in this kingdom again. I think your direction could benefit from the use of some adjectives and adverbs. Some what? Adjectives and adverbs are describing words. You see, adjectives are words used to describe people, places, animals, and things. The words we call nouns. For example, this is a boring play. Boring is an adjective that describes the play. Those are drab, colorless costumes. Drab and colorless are adjectives that describe the costumes. Yes, I think I get your point. Now, adverbs, on the other hand, are words used to describe what is happening, also known as action verbs. For example, the actors spoke softly. The dancers danced clumsily. The audience clapped <sighs> quietly. I'm not sure I understand. How will these describing words improve my play? Ah, that's easy. You might say something like, Actors, speak loudly so the audience can hear you. Or, Costumer, make the costumes colorful. Or, Set builder, build impressive sets. Or, My beautiful dancers, please dance gracefully. Or, Musicians, play exciting music and play it joyfully. I think I understand now. Adjectives are describing words that help me tell more about nouns. And adverbs are describing words that help me give more detail about action verbs. Now you've got it, Grammar Kingdom's smart and talented director. The next evening... And the proud townsfolk happily celebrated their great victory! <laughs> that was a very entertaining play. Bravo! Thank you, thank you, oh, thank you so much. I owe it all to adjectives and adverbs. And the good citizens of Grammar Kingdom were entertained excellently ever after. I could use a little help here. <laughs> Not exactly the kind of hope I was looking for, little buddy. <laughs> there it is! The waterfall of the secret sapphire! According to the legend, the largest sapphire gemstone in the world is behind those falls. <laughs> Don't worry, Scout. We won't get wet. You'll see. Look! Just like it's pictured in the journal! Bright. Bright. Hmm. Both the campfire and the sun are bright, but one of them is more bright than the other. Good thinking, Scout. We can use the letter stones we collected along the riverbank. By adding ER to the end of an adjective like bright, we can turn it into a word we can use to compare two things, like a campfire and the sun. 
Now we just have to figure out which one is brighter than the other. That's right. The sun is a lot brighter than a campfire. Whoa! Let's go, Scout! Young. Young. Both the girl and the baby are young, but one of them is younger than the other. That's right, Scout. The baby is younger than the little girl. Yes! It's building a staircase to that landing! Let's keep going. We're almost there. Uh-oh. This one has three pictures. Strong, strong, strong. This is a tricky one. All three of these men are strong. We need some way to compare all three of them to each other. But how? E. S. T. Of course! Why didn't I think of that? By adding E-S-T to the end of an adjective like strong, we turn it into a word we can use to compare more than two things. Like these three strong men. Now, we just have to figure out which one is strong, which one is stronger, and which one is the strongest of them all. <laughs> well, we know it's not you, Scout. Let's see. This man carrying two sacks is stronger than that man carrying only one. But this man carrying six sacks is the strongest of them all. There it is. We did it! This is going to be a great addition to the Madagascar exhibit at the museum. See? Just like I told you. We got to the sapphire, and we didn't get wet. Okay, so maybe we got a little wet. <laughs> but we still got the sapphire. A turn of the vowel valve here, a twist of the consonant crank there, and a slight adjustment to the thing that goes zing. Oh, hello there. I didn't see you. I'm Mr. Wordsmith, and this is one of the greatest gadgets in all my wondrous word factory. The amazing adverb, a zinger. And this is Farley, my kind and able assistant. Hello. Today, we're using the adverb a zinger to add a little to the sentences in a story Farley is writing. I wrote this story for my little girl. But what's this thing that goes zing, and why do my verbs need it? Before I explain what the zing does, let's talk about verbs. Now, you remember what they are, right? They tell what something is or what something does. I have lots of verbs in my story. But what you could use are some words that give a little to your sentences. You do that by adding a word that gives more information to super dupify your verbs. That's exactly what I need. And adding a little more information will help your reader to imagine what's happening in your story. That's where the adverb a zinger comes in. Watch what happens to this sentence from your story. Dakota the dinosaur runs through the garden. Hmm. This sentence could sure use some zing. Uh, but, sir, that's my only copy of the story. Now, Farley, let's pick a word that describes what you want the reader to imagine when reading your sentence. Does Dakota the dinosaur happily run through the garden? 
Well, I had a different idea in mind when I wrote that sentence. Now, when Farley changes the word happily to something different, watch how it changes the action described by the verb run. Now, Dakota the dinosaur carefully runs through the garden. That's perfect. Dakota's being careful because she doesn't want to step on the tomatoes. Her friend grew them. Now, let's try a different sentence from your story, Farley. Remember the part about me not having another copy? Dakota stopped when she saw her friend. Ready to add some zing to this sentence, Farley? Dakota stopped slowly when she saw her friend. That's not really what I imagined. Dakota stopped clumsily when she saw her friend. That's more like it. I think Farley's getting the hang of it. But why do you call this the adverb a zinger? Because the kind of words we're adding, words that tell more about the verbs, are called adverbs. They add information to our verbs. Get it? Now, let's try the next sentence. Uh, here goes. Dakota's friend looked at her. Looks like this sentence could use an adverb, Farley. How about this one? Did Dakota's friend look angrily at her? Oh, no. The adverb angrily just won't do. I was imagining something very different when I wrote that sentence. I want it to be a happy ending. After all, she couldn't be mad at her best friend. Dakota's friend looked cheerfully at her. Fine choice, Farley. Now you understand that adverbs give more information about how something is done. And that's a story I want to read. Yeah. What's wrong, Farley? How can you read it if I don't have a copy? How? Why, you can read it easily, of course. abcmouse.com Communication, connectivity is everything. We ensure that the links never sleep. Quantities and qualities, all in our data service, providing efficient, reliable voice and data service. We believe if you're not up to speed, then you're going backwards. Communications have to flow as fast as the speed of light. Whatever business you're in, having someone who understands your needs is critical. That is why we just don't offer you technology, we offer you solutions. Enjoy Gumsell's internet broadband anytime, anywhere. Your national operator, Gumsell, Yaibarom. I got it. Yeah, I'm not a transfer. 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 I'
56 branches mwana soda Gambia ja. Ha? Ka. Gambia kono ani Gambia bantala bankol. Nko kono ki ya bele. Hmm? Kodo sifa sifa fo falindiro fo nyadi lafta meme men na kodi to koto ni kodi maro. Jamna number one ti nyonta. And num fana nata another enterprise sotale. Wolo wolo nyin ti ko domorol fana ngol fana be firale de dadi ma ni domorol bi fana be teat. Ha. Gambia daw da yalo ma fun fa kendol sotale ji. Ha e wo mo e odiat ha. A pelen da. Yo ka ni na lafta nyela kendol e bina. Yalo bu ka ni na ko la barka ba. Yalo ndel chosa no lo. A barka. Yamtel G Fiber, now you can enjoy super fast internet in gigabytes. G Fiber is affordable, stable, secured, and accessible to homes, businesses, and enterprises. With Gamtel G Fiber, the future is speed. Gamtel, creating a brighter future in communication. Boy, Janno Circus Restaurant. Yes, I know who be in the Dimbal. Number Domoro Kara Janno. Domoro Seneata, Adiata, Topotoro, Fanan Kendama Bije. Luntan During, Tamala, Abeka Domoro Kijani, Adimanda Wallade, Takawe Bijele, and Infanan Kafa Dijang, Ukono Fa. A government of pastry and in bakery, Ukofanan Bekalil. Badé lomba en conférence lomba workshop lomba y a fort fait nul le dunia kono. Domoro betama nul lom international au tiwoda number one. Amanke bar domola jang damani. Et ça domo jang est atari ya. Ah ou mukou bandi. Ah ça n'a pas de foutre dim. Eh auto ça n'a pas de musique et restaurant. Dabana jang nomu yad ni manje de rombi jang. Aban. Musique et restaurant known for best quality food and customer satisfaction. Thank you. 